I want to reveal more truth to all of you because there's just a ton of deception out there. So today we're going to be discussing the origins of Amen, Lord, and God, and why churches have you saying these things and you don't even know what you're saying. Now, for some of you, you may not be able to believe it. You know, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm just trying to lead you all to truth and lead those who want to know truth into truth and why you need to get out of the church quick. So here I found this website talking about the pagan god Amin-Ra, which is where you get today's Amin. And we're going to read through it and cruise through it. And then we're going to get to Baal Gad or Lord God. So it says, the ancient Egyptian god or idol Amin-Ra has been resurrected. When the Africania mission realized that they could promote African traditional religion by uniting it around as a single god, they faced a problem. Which one of the hundreds or thousands worshipped in Africa? How would one be considered better than another? And wouldn't the devotees of other shrines feel slighted if the god of another shrine was chosen to be the biggie? So in other words, they wanted to, back then, and or the pagans wanted to initiate a new religion and they needed a new god to do that. So they were trying to figure out, okay, well, which god can they use? So the answer was to go back to an ancient god. Through what must have been a rather arbitrary process, the ancient god or idol Amin-Ra, once worshipped in Egypt, was chosen and declared to be the supreme god. Now, Amin-Ra comes from Amun-Ra, which is another pagan Egyptian sun god. In doing so, Africana bypassed the supreme creator god, the all-powerful, the eternal one, known by virtually all African cultures and expressed by various names. His existence is acknowledged everywhere, but he is seldom worshipped. So basically, this god has become a universal god. So let's see who Amin-Ra or Amun-Ra is and where do you get the word Amin today. It says, Amin was an ancient Egyptian deity, first a local deity worshipped in the area of Thebes, which is along the Nile. When the two kingdoms of Egypt united earlier in Egyptian history, he grew in importance until he emerged as the chief deity. This did not take place until the 18th dynasty, 1570 to 1293 BC. I have a feeling it took place much earlier than that. Amin means that which cannot be seen. For as a local deity, Amin had been the god of the wind. Later, as the chief deity, he was considered king of the gods. Wow, god of the wind, who does that sound like? That sounds like today's reincarnate of the quote-unquote Holy Spirit, who Christians say are is completely different from Yahuwah. No, they're not different. The, the spirit or the ruach, that is that comes from Yahuwah. It, it's not two, two completely different beings. So that's where that the Holy Spirit and that, that idea of a trinity comes from. Let's keep going. As was often the case in Egyptian religion, this god was often combined with others, thus pleasing the worshippers of those deities. Especially effective was his combination with Ra, the sun god. Ra was believed to be the father of all living things and the physical father of all the pharaohs because they worshipped the pagan god, the, the the sun god. I mean, Ra is not generally regarded as the oldest of the gods worshipped in Egypt because Egypt, Egypt had a ton of gods. And in fact, the oldest religion is claimed for Horus, actually. H Horus, who is, you know, uh, the son of Isis and Osiris. You know, we have all that, the ancient Babylonian religions that are alive and well today. And the article basically goes on to talk about the history and um, what goes on and how Amin-Ra has um, really found itself in Egyptian theology but has made its way here to today's America. So in short, when you say Amen or when you say Amen after you're done praying, you're actually giving worship to Amen-Ra. You're actually giving worship to pagan Egyptian gods. You're giving worship to sun gods, just like when you go to church on Sunday. But that's not all. It gets worse. Let's go here to Baal Gad. Does Baal Gad equal the Lord God of Christianity by Donald Atkins? To many Christians, the above question would be blasphemous to even contemplate. They would never even consider the thought, much less study the noble barians of whom it is written in the scriptures. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, who received the word with great eagerness and searched the scriptures daily if these words were so. 
Scripture says that the old serpent called the devil and Satan has deceived the whole world. Let me just let me just highlight that. Deceived the whole world. Christians, that includes you. And the great dragon that was thrown out, that old serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who leads all the world astray. All, not some, not just some people, not just the atheists, not just the Buddhists, no, everyone. Do you realize just how deep that deception is? This article reveals some of the depths of that deception to those who are able to receive it. And my hope today is that those is, is you as well. So let's keep going. Who or what is Baal? Sorry, I'm going to skip over. You can read it on your own. I'll leave links below. To find the answer to this question, a good place to begin is using the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary. So this writer references the Hebrew Dictionary in order to let us know where does Baal and where does Gad really come from. So let's see. Number 1167, Baal, a master, hence a husband or owner, often used with another noun in modification of this latter sense, archer, babbler, notice the word babbler, tower of Babel, bird, captain, chief, man, confederate, have to do, and the list goes on. Now, if these were the only one uses of the word Baal, we really couldn't complain, could we? Why? Because even scripture reveals that Yahuwah was a husband to Israel. This in Hebrew would be Yahuwah is Baal to Israel. Thus, Baal is used in a good sense here. But this is not the only usage of the word, as we shall show. So there's another usage of this word, Baal. And we see it in number 1168, Baal, the same as 1167, a Phoenician deity, Balim. And we see Balim or Balaam in the book of Numbers as well. Here we find another Balaam, a bad one, a false deity. Can we find out more about this false deity? Yes, let me quote page 1212 uh, in the explanatory notes of the scriptures. And here he uh, it says what this Phoenician deity is and how it relates in sun worship. Baal, this word, it seems, gradually became a proper name. A similar Semitic word derives from the Aryan root Baal, which means to shine, according to some. Shine, what does that sound like? Sun. According to W.H. Rosher's well-known lexicon of mythology, <clears throat> Baal, or Bel, Belos, was the ancestral and national deity of the Semites and says that Baal was the founder of Babel, Babylon, according to secular history. He is identified with Zeus, Jupiter, Amon, Ashur, Asur, Kronos, and Bel Marduk. Morris Jastrow, Max Müller, and W. H. Rosher, all three agree, Baal is the Babylonian sun deity. The Baals of the nations were sun deities, and Baal worship means sun worship. And this goes back with the story of Semiramis in um, Nimrod. When Nimrod made himself into the sun god, he changed his name from Nimrod to Baal, Baal worship, Satan worship. So when you see that, it actually means, Baal means Satan. It's talking about sun worship. And now it goes on to talk about Baal Gad, which is Baal of Fortune, a place in Syria, Baal Gad. Now that doesn't tell us too much, but... You have to remember who Satan is. He likes to twist words. He likes to twist scripture. He likes to twist everything. So when you start to really look up these things, you start to see what Gad really means. Fortune, a bab, deity, that troop. Now remember, Gad, gadfly, you know, Satan's just like a gadfly, annoying. So this also lets us know what it means. Here is Satan. Here's where Satan has played word games to deceive the whole world into worshiping a false Babylonian deity of fortune. But who is really being worshipped behind the name of this ancient idol Balgad? And how has Satan accomplished this so easily? Word games. Remember Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Remember that Yahusha, Yahusha also said, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John chapter 5 verse is 43. Now it's interesting, isn't it? Because Baal just sounds just like Baalzebub or Beelzebub, a special deity of the Ekronauts. Beelzebub, Baalzebub, a name of Satan. So as you can see, putting it together, you see Baal Gad, Master Satan. It's right here. Who is the Lord God, Master Satan? 
Lord God Baal Gad, Master Satan. That is who you're worshiping on Sunday. Also, you're also worshiping sun gods when you say amen after you pray to Baal Gad or Master Satan on Sunday. Remember his name. His name is Yahuwah. His son's name, the true son, the true Messiah's name is Yahusha. So where are all these pagan names coming from? When we're not to use them, they're against the commandments. It's right here. And I'm, I put in this out there because a, a lot of you that are in church and are worshiping these pagan sun gods and don't even know it, that is how Satan has deceived the world. He's deceived you into worshiping these pagan sun gods. He's deceived you into partaking in sun worship, the same thing that the Egyptians took part in thousands of years ago. Nothing has changed. Nothing is new under the sun. And I'm telling you right now, if you're under the sound of my voice and you're into Christianity, you're into religion, you're into these pagan sun gods, the first place that's going to get the the first place that is going to receive the judgment will be the quote unquote church because as I said in my other video, church and Christian weren't in the original um Hebrew manuscripts of the scriptures. They will be the first ones to get the judgment because they are partaking in pagan sun worship. You're breaking the fourth commandment because you're not honoring the Sabbath. You're breaking the third commandment because you are not. Um, you're not taking the name of you're taking the name of Yahuwah in vain and you're worshiping other gods the worshiping of other gods that you're doing on Sunday you're breaking the first commandment and you're breaking the second commandment if you have graven images of the false white Jesus who is the image of the beast in your house so you so even the act of going to church is breaking a commandment and when you pray Lord God and when you say amen and give worship to these pagan deities then that is what you're doing. It's not giving worship to the Most High at all. He does not hear you when you are worshiping Lord God or Baal Gad on Sunday. It's all sun worship. Your pastors will not tell you this. Your preachers won't tell you this. They don't want you to know this because they make money off of you when you quote unquote tithe to them. When tithing has nothing to do with money, it has everything to do with food. Your pastors and preachers know that. They want to make money off of you and they want to keep you stupid. My people are perished because they have lack of knowledge. Please wake up fast. Judgment is almost here. The 400 years of slavery is almost over with three more years to go. I just want people to really wake up to this truth and see for themselves that they have been deceived. Yes, yes, you Christian who go to church on Sunday, you have been deceived. And if you're still going to church, you're still part of the deception. The whole world has been deceived and they don't even know it. And by the way, this sun worship, pagan sun worship has been going on for almost 1700 years now. You know, people like to say, well, when is the enforced Sunday worship going to come to pass? The enforced Sunday worship is already here. It was, it already took place in 325 AD when Constantine instituted Sunday or the pagan worship of sun gods on Sunday back in 325 AD. It's been here for almost 1700 years, folks. The enforced Sunday worship is here. Why do you think they're all businesses are closed on that day and not giving honor to the Sabbath? Because it's all giving honor and praise to Lord God Baal Gad, Master Satan. Now, I'm going to leave a video below that um, also talks about the origins of Amin. But, but do use your spirit of discernment in the video because the video does show that the quote-unquote Jesus is in fact Horus. Um, and that's where you get, you know, your Mary and your Jesus, your Horus and your, um, and your Isis. That is in fact true, but it's to show that those are in fact of Egyptian pagan origin. The true Messiah is Yahusha and the true, our true creator, his name is Yahuwah. So don't get it twisted and say, oh, well, this is, this is completely disproving the Messiah. No, it's trying to show you that the word Jesus and the word, um, and Horus and all of them, it's all based in pagan religion and same with mother mary for whom you catholics worship it's based in pagan religion pagan egyptian sun worship i hope you're seeing this and i hope you're waking up to truth with both eyes open and not just one like the eye of horus because it's you know the deception is real folks i mean the truth is real too and i hope you're seeing it but satan is on a rampage getting the world to worship him and he's already done it through the churches. He's already done it through the uh, the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. He's already done it with atheism. He's already done it even with all these other pagan religions out here.
Because where do you hear the name of Yahuwah being professed and preached? Almost virtually little to nowhere. So I'm telling you this to tell you to get into truth, get out of religion, get out of paganism, and get out of this sun worship, which is called today's church. Please, because you do not want to be deceived in these last days. And for those of you who still want to argue and still want to say whatever, well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, may Yahuwah be with you because I'm telling you this deception is real and you don't want to be caught in the day of vengeance going to church on Sunday. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave this out here for you all. Leave the links below. Comment below. Make sure they're constructive. Um, shalom.